Welcome to the Murrily End. My name is Mark Machado. I'm joined by Estelle Vaz Devon in Sri Lanka and my cousin across the pond, the professor of cricketology, Dominic Machado. We have come together today, um, people, to discuss what is, in, for all intents and purposes, a quarter final series on the road to the big game if we make it to London next year. Um, against South Africa in South Africa. It's a two-test series. Um, Sri Lanka have four matches between now and um, the big match, the big game um, at Lords, And we reckon at the Murali End HQ that Sri Lanka only need to win three. If they win three of the four, then it doesn't matter what else happens to the rest of the other results. Uh, right, it's a quiet. I think this is about as exciting a time for Schwanke as we've had in, in probably since 2014. I, I reckon um, we've got a lot to discuss on this show as we look ahead about how Schwanke will intend to win in South Africa. Before we do that, though, a little bit of housekeeping. Firstly, we have got a newsletter. We've got WhatsApp groups as well. It's not really a group. It's a community. We put all our updates in there, and there'll be lots of updates for this series, so you don't want to miss any of those. Um, as soon as we get them, any bit of news, any bit of gossip that Estelle hears, which is out and about on the street, um, or any, any bit of analysis that Dominic uncovers about how we can... Uh, take South Africa down, go straight in that channel. So get into that channel. Um, Sign up for the newsletter. We've got lots of great writing planned for that too. We've got lots of great content coming up through Murali End, but also I need to tell you about the big bag. Seven Sri Lankan players got picked up in the IPL auction, which is an incredible amount of players. Some established IPL players, some players who've barely played any domestic cricket in Sri Lanka. If you want to know all about that and their stories, and also the rest of the auction, uh, make sure you're watching the big bag. We've set up an audio link um, feed for that as well. That'd be separate. Those normally take a couple of days to come through. So as soon as that's out, we'll, we'll be telling you all about that and we'll set up social feeds for that as well. That's a growing, a new growing thing from us all about franchise cricket. Um, that's the kind of housekeeping done. Estelle, we are about 36 hours away from the point of recording this from that first of the quarterfinal game starting in South Africa. I just want to know how you're feeling right now and, and what you think of Sri Lanka's preparations thus far. Yeah, it's, it, it's an exciting time for Sri Lanka, right? I mean, they're going into this series knowing that they've played some good cricket with, the, with a lot of confidence after beating a New Zealand side which uh, crashed India in India. Um, and also, I'm sure that the performance in England will also give them a lot of confidence. So I think it's a really exciting time for Sri Lanka. Um, I think most fans are also cautiously kind of optimistic that Sri Lanka can at least pull one game from South Africa and then it'll be up to them whether they can sweep Australia or not. But uh, really exciting times. I mean, I'm really looking forward to it. Unfortunately, I don't think it's big telecast on the cable thing I own. So I'm going to have to get a different one to watch the series. Uh, But yeah, excited. You've not got long to sort that out. You've got to go get that sorted as soon as possible, I'd imagine. Dominic, how are you feeling about it? I'm super excited. Uh, I was just thinking to myself, not only is this great in terms of Sri Lanka cricket, right, that we're playing for a spot in this World Test Championship, but how much exciting Test cricket is going on right this moment. Uh, You know, I think all of us were watching this Australia-India series series and all these teams with a lot to play for. And I think that Sri Lanka is going in with a lineup, too, that's looking to define its legacy, right? We have the seniors, Demuth Karunaratna, Dinesh Chandamal, uh, Angelo Matthews, and um, and who am I forgetting? Who's the other senior that I'm forgetting here? And DDS. Well, DDS. Yeah. yeah, and DDS. And they have been great servants of Sri Lankan cricket. They've played really well. They've scored hundreds all over the world. But this is really like a defining moment for them. This is a chance to say, okay, let's take it. Let's get to the pinnacle of Test cricket, play a final in London next summer for the Test Championship trophy, right? And I think that's something that's really, really exciting for all those players, many of whom are on the very last legs of their career so for them this is a chance to kind of etch their name into sri lankan cricket history 
like the greats before them, like Aravinda, like Mahela, like Sangha, right? To, to have a performance that Sri Lankan fans will not just say, oh, yeah, he was a good player, but they'll recall this moment, this series, when everything was on the line and they came up big for their team. So I think that's that's a really special moment, right? Because um, oftentimes I feel like with Test cricket, the ending of careers is kind of like an event in and of itself. But here there is meaning cast on these games um, with respect to the World Test Championship. And I know we've we heard Demuth say it when he was captain. We've heard DDS say it. They firmly believe they're one of the best test teams in the world. And this is their chance to prove it and to prove it on the big stage while everybody is watching. Yeah, I don't think any other uh, platform in the world has, has kind of dissected Sanjay Surya's career as head coach as much as we have done at the Murley end. But I think it's absolutely undeniable that this team that he's the at the forefront of has this absolute laser focus in on it. I remember at um, at Lords when they were there playing England last summer and they lost that, that second test. They straight away, they were like, this third test at the Oval matters. It counts. We're here not to win. Like, obviously, winning the series is something they wanted to do. But the bigger prize was always to try and get to the final, right? That was always what the bigger prize was for them. And they've kind of realized this dream, right? I mean, it's it's exciting. This If if this championship didn't exist, this would have just been another two-match series in a, in a part of the Canada where everyone else was playing test cricket. The narrative would have been like, South Africa don't want to play a lot of test cricket. They're focused on T20 cricket. Sri Lanka are more focused on the white ball team. They let the old uh, older guys come out and play test cricket. When actually, the whole thing's rejuvenated, right? From a kind of sport professional sport as much as you hate to say it it's basically a marketing play isn't it it's like gotta give re- people a reason to follow this game gotta give people a reason to watch this game and we have a we have loads of reasons to watch this game right um i feel it's kind of galvanized us as a test side suddenly people aren't talking about what's the point of playing Sri Lanka anymore what's the point you know i i was a big advocate of it i was like if there's no real end goal to this what is the point of us playing test cricket and i'm to- i am changed i'm converted <laughs> I've had my road to road to Lord's moment here, right? I am fully like, let's get on this. I am on this bandwagon. Like, sh- sports teams exist to win trophies and to do big feats, and this is a a, a, opp- a prime opportunity for us to do both of them. And I'm absolutely buzzing for it. The question is, though, Estelle, do that. Like, the boys might be focused for it. The um, you know the the. The heart might be willing, but do we have the ice in the head and the skills in the hands and the feet to go to South Africa and win 2-0? That will be the big, biggest question, right? Because uh, I think we spoke about it in the last part with uh, Nick and Dom, about how even if you look at the, the white ball setup, right? Sri Lanka have been good in bilaterals, good in between ICC tournaments. But then when they go into a tournament thinking, you know what, we have a good team, we are capable of finishing in that top five, suddenly everything crashes and burns, right? And that's what's happened in the last, I think, I would say three World Cups that Sri Lanka have played 50 over and D20. So this will be the big test. Do they have the temperament? I think they have the skills, right? I think they have the skills to play well in, in South African conditions. And I think we've just kind of, there's just been a press conference with the South African coach saying that they're not looking to like, give Sri Lanka, I don't know whether this is to mislead um, analysis or whatever, <laughs> but uh, they're not looking to give, you know, really green, difficult surfaces to um, play on, but rather more sporting sur- surfaces. So I do think Sri Lanka has a skill set to win in South Africa. It's the temperament that will come into play, I think, because, like I said, like, we don't often have opportunities like this, right? We don't. We haven't been able to put ourselves in positions like this where we could, we realistically have a chance of going. I mean, last uh, the last World Test Championship, Sri Lanka were in the running for the final until the last couple of series. But it was yeah. always going to be India and Australia, right? That that was kind of where the road, all roads were leading. But here, because because of New Zealand, suddenly the door has been opened wide to a few other teams. And I mean, South Africa is going to be up for it as well because they yep. could make the final if they win 2-0. So temperament will be the biggest thing. 
skill set the only thing i'm concerned about is what will the bowlers do like prabhat didn't have a great series i thought he didn't do badly in england but he didn't have a great series right so you're going to have to depend on the likes of asita and maybe vishwa to have like a really good time in south africa last time we had our hopes pinned on vishwa things didn't quite like pan out the way we would have wanted but that's the thing right you have to deal with that expectation and people who the players who do deal with that expectation well are the ones who turn turn out to be like big match winners for your team so that is the test like who are your players who will stand up to that pressure and really perform to their potential that will be the big question for me uh dominic i i look at this shrug squad now and actually i kind of feel that within the last yeah, and a bit. Um, all of our 11 have at points been absolutely pivotal in having in winning us games, right? I think, yeah, but pre New Zealand and even pre England, I think there were some players where you were like, they're good players, but they maybe haven't come shown test cricket exactly what they could do. But now you go yeah. through it and you're like, actually, you know, Patton's had a he had a, a day out at, at the Oval. Kussel started to get into the runs when he's batted lower down. Um, obviously, you know, someone like Prabhat has, has just picks up wickets for fun, particularly at home. Um, who are the players, though, in the South African lineup that really worry you and make you nervous? So, number one for me, I think this is not going to be a surprise to anybody, is Kagiso Rabada. Um, he was so, so good in Bangladesh. He looks back on form. He's got 300 career wickets. I find to, uh, sorry, test uh, wickets. I find him to be massively underrated given what he's achieved. Um, no other bowler has gotten to 300 wickets in fewer balls. His strike rate is like a ludicrous 38 or something like that. And he, with the new ball in hand, um, he is known to deliver feisty spells and the Sri Lankan batters are going to have to be at their best and they can't just look to survive. I think when they win abroad, it's when they take the attack to the bowling. So even though Rabada is going to come at them hard, they've got to be ready to counter that as best as they can. Of course you show them respect, but Rabada to me is the number one match winner in um, South Africa. And he's kind of the guy who, to my mind, can take over a game and just change the complexion of it with a few balls. Um, other people that I'm looking out for, uh, Keshav Maharaj, again, very wily spinner. He's been in great form over the last few years. We tend to struggle against left arm spin, particularly very good experience left arm spin. I think last time South Africa was in uh, Sri Lanka, he performed really well too, so he knows how to get our batters out. Um and another another player I'm going to look at too is Marco Janssen, um, who has a fantastic average in in Test cricket. I think he averages 22. Tall left armer moves the ball at pace, and he can also provide those kind of sparky innings um, down the order too. He's the, exactly the kind of batter we run through the top of the order, and then we're like, okay, we can breathe a little bit. Who can take the match away from you? So for me, it's Rabada. Uh, Maharaj and Janssen, who are really kind of snatching the attention. They have good batters, but none of them really um, sort of strike fear into my heart. Estelle, any other names that you want to chuck in there? Yeah, I'm just checking uh, Aiden Markram's record, right? Yeah, that, that was the player that worries me as well. Yeah, apart from the other one, I know actually. he's not he's not had a great time in limited overs cricket and that's where a lot of criticism have come, right? Because he was, I think it was Kohli who kind of said some time ago that, you know, this guy is going to be the next big thing in cricket. And things didn't quite turn out in that way. But in test cricket, opening the batting, he's been pretty decent. Um, he's got runs and he generally, I feel like, likes batting against Sri Lanka. Um, He's the one, I think, in, from the batting point of view that I would have my eye on, particularly because he's opening the batting, right? So Sri Lanka will need early wickets if they want to put that kind of inexperienced batting order under some pressure. And I think he will be the big wicket up front. The other guy is David Beddingham. 
who got a lot of runs against Sri Lanka A and then flew off to play county cricket. Not doesn't have the experience that like you know when you talk about Sri Lanka, South Africa, you always we always bring up the 2019 series, right? And when you compare that South African team and this South African team, it's like poles apart. That one had Paf, it had Dean Elgar, it had Hashim Amla, it had Stain, um, you know, Duan Olivier, it had a lot of a lot of experienced players. But although this team doesn't have that experience, I think they have uh, kind of the temperament to play good test cricket. I mean, Dizozi was good against uh, Bangladesh. Um, Beddingham, as I said, you know, has played a lot of county cricket as well. So they do have that. I mean, they do. They can, they have the kind of batting lineup. I think that can take a game away from you very quickly because they tend to play a lot more attacking. Right? They're probably going to play Fist and Stubbs also in that side. So I don't. But I I do feel like we should not be taking them lightly because it's very easy to think that, you know, Sri Lanka basically had more or less the same, or they had a few of those players in 2019, right? But South Africa is like a completely different side apart from Maharaja and uh, Bahuma and Prabhada. So it, it would be easy to kind of underestimate them, particularly after winning against like a team that had so many legends. But they will have to go hard right from the start. And I think that first game is going to be crucial because if they can do that, like I said, this is the previous part as well. Like if they can do something in that first game in Durban, then you know mm. it's everything to play for in the second test. Yeah, I I I, I agree. I, I actually think, I mean, I know it's always cliche saying this, but Shrug really needs to start well because too often we see this in, and it almost doesn't matter what the format is, is we start series really badly. Um, you, you go back to that England series in Manchester, and it was we were all over the place very early on. Um, if if we could get a good start, if we have to bowl first, if they if, if Sri Lanka decide to bowl first or whatever, then early wickets, early wickets, or if we have to bat first and just stick about the crease, you've got five days. Take take your time. Um, I kind of think when you look at this team on paper in terms of number of caps and achievements i think Sri could probably edge it because this mm. the mainly because so so many of our players have been around for so long yeah. right um top seven all average 40 plus right so yeah yeah um but we know asian teams going to, to africa going to south africa is very difficult for them right um, so we need to buck that trend. I was speaking to Neil Manthorpe, who who I think might be making an appearance on this show. He's people might know him as one of the commentators uh, for Talk Sport. He also has lived a lot of t- spent a lot of time in South Africa. He's also covered a lot of Sri Lanka cricket as well. And he made the point to me. He was like, I don't think I've ever seen a Sri Lanka Test team prepare as well or as much for a Test series as they have done for this. Um, in terms of flying out early, the homework that they're doing, bringing it, you know, the extra coaches that they're bringing in. We haven't even talked about that. Sri Lanka are quite on, on it this time. Not, I'm not saying they haven't been on it in the past, but they really, really want to win this game. When we went to, when we were in the semi-finals of the championship last time around, and we had to go to New Zealand to get results there, they spent a couple of weeks up in the, um, I can't remember where, where the pitch was up, somewhere in Neuralia, right? Preparing yeah. for, for for what the wicket would be like. And that first game, we, we didn't quite get over the line. We didn't win it. But we absolutely played absolutely brilliant cricket away mm-hmm. from home, which is the first time we've done that in the first match of a test series in quite a long time. We need to kind of bring that focus back to it and, and, and kind of start well. I don't, you know, it, it's one of these things where, you know, we, we just sit wherever we are, in our spare rooms or whatever, commentating or, or, or talking about a, a side is born out of a passion for the team. And, you know, sometimes we go, maybe they need to move this player around. Maybe Kirsten needs to bat low down the order. Kaminda should bat higher up. Someone else should come in. Who should, this person should bat on the power play. But the whole starting the series situation is something yeah. that I just have no, nothing to, to say other than, Go on, boys! Like just, just go and do it. Like don't take your foot off the gas. I don't know if there's something in, in, in all of us. If you are Sri Lankan, that we are just so laid back that it every other team could bring a lot more intensity early on. I don't know what the psychology is behind it, but Dom, have you got think, any answers to? Yeah, that? I was going to say. I think that's the 
Oh, go ahead, Estelle. Go go for it. Uh, no, I can't remember whether it was you who said it about the All Blacks half card. No, there was some kind of study I think done where, or someone spoke to an All Black who said that because it's so intense, right? They start with the haka that they found that they were underperforming in the first 40, 40 minutes of the game because they bring so much intensity to that that when they actually start the game, it's like they have to find energy. I feel like sometimes with Sri Lanka as well, it is very much a mental thing, right? Like it, it, it is you put so much intensity into training and kind of geeing yourself up and all of that. You forget that the processes are the same. Right, the way you go about things with the bat and the ball are the same whether it's the first game or the second game or the third game. But because you're so like G'd up and you want to go out there and you want to get things started and get off to a good start, it's almost like you try too hard. Like, you, I mean, and the start of a series is so important if you look at the most recent test series, right? Um, New Zealand, India, India all out for 40 something. And then it was all down, like all of us thought that's okay, that's the only good day New Zealand are going to have in the entire yeah. series. And then it was all down here from there. BGT started the same way, right? Like Australia's, I mean, this could end 4 nil in, in India's favor as well now because of that start. So start is going to be important. I think it's a mentality thing. So hopefully they kind of also relax there's enough experience for that now right so there's no excuse like maybe uh, yeah. Patani Sanka would be excited but like there's enough experience there to kind of get people in the right head space to go into that game oh poor pass and getting a shout out there mm-hmm. uh, I was gonna <laughs> when say I was though watching, so yeah, just, I was, just a quick side note yeah, Tom, when I was watching the BGT this morning I was thinking can you imagine what would happen to Australia if New Zealand played them and then I thought can you imagine what would happen to Australia if Sri Lanka played them? <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Tom. But no, I was going to say, but at the same time, New Zealand, you know, kind of, they have this mental block with mm-hmm. with Australia when it comes to, to test cricket. But um, I think for me, I think test cricket provides a little bit of a different energy level, right? So I found that sometimes you have the feeling that Sri Lanka is really on it in that first session, right? They'll take three wickets and then mm. they'll let the game kind of drift, right? And that kind of happened um, in a couple of the test matches in England or vice versa. They're batting first and all of a sudden three wickets fall very early and then they kind of have to grind it out and, and get their way back into the game after that. So I think managing to kind of if they bowl first to maintain that energy throughout the entire innings. And if they bat first to not get too antsy with, okay, like we need to score runs. We need to get runs on the board, but kind of take it as it comes. And that's where I think that experience that, that core four of Dimuth, Angie, Chundi and DDS is going to be so important, especially from the batting point of view. Um, I think it's been very rare in Sri Lankan cricketing history to have four players of their experience and caliber um, who are allowed to kind of play that soak up the pressure role. And they have so many backstops that they can kind of let, and I mentioned this in the previous pod, uh, Potham, Kamindu, and Kusal just have at it and tell them, you guys, you know what, doesn't matter what happens, go after the bowling, get quick runs. If you guys score a match-winning 100, that will be massive for us. And then trust those seniors to kind of stand up and hold that innings together no matter what else happens. Uh, I think with the bowling, it's going to have to be more of a, I think that's going to have to be planned. I think they really need to come in with dismissals planned, approaches planned. So you don't have those fallow periods like where, oh, well, plan A didn't work. So now we're just going to throw out a spin bowler for a couple of overs and see what happens. So I think they'll really, it's kind of, um, from a mentality perspective, and this is where I give Sanath Jaisuria the most credit. I think I saw a quote saying, he just tells the players, right, when you show up, I need six hours of your time to be completely focused on the cricket. When you're there, you're there, you're you're fully present. And um, I think that's the biggest gap that Sri Lanka have to kind of uh, 
breach in order to be a competitive top level team all the time is that mental gap. It's not a talent issue as much as it is, okay, our players have to be focused. They have to have clear plans. They have to be thought out. And I think Sunath has done a really good job, right? Even if we disagree with some of the tactical moves, implementing those tactics and being aggressive about those tactics. Um, so I, I'm I'm hopeful that they will take that aggressive mentality with a clear sort of clear headed idea. I also think, and this is maybe a cultural point, I think that um, Sri Lankans can get conservative if there's a lot on the line. So mm-hmm. if you feel like there's a lot to lose, right, you might lose this. Uh, spot in the test championship, you might be unnecessarily conservative when you could, um, and, and you might lose opportunities that way. So that's what I don't want to see them do. I want them to play like they did in that first test against New Zealand last year, where they throw everything out at them and, you know, you lose, that's okay. We can live with that. No one was saying at the end of that test match, wow, we wish we we had tried harder or played harder. Um, and so that mentality of, We're going to leave everything out there, especially for that first match is going to be really important. Yeah. And like, I mean, they do, they don't have anything to lose. Right. Because apart from us, no one's, no one's, no one's expecting them to make that final. No one's expecting them to do much in South Africa. I I don't think too many people would be even paying much attention to South Africa, Sri Lanka going on because like the India, Australia test series is going to be on at the same time, right? So they don't really, they shouldn't be taking too much pressure onto themselves because if they make it, that's great. If they don't, like, it's just going to be like the three of us or four of us with Nick crying over it on on a podcast. (laughs) Like, it's not going to matter much, uh, like in the grand scheme of things. I imagine if, if, oh my gosh, I just, I'm just thinking about all the things that could happen. Like, could you imagine yeah. like. I was thinking that after and... we, after we had the previous part about, like, just imagine if they make it. Cause like Dom was yeah. telling me, I should probably get like my visa stuff started right now. Yeah. <laughs> if I want to yeah. do it. But yeah. yeah, it would be amazing. I mean, Dom, this this bed is ready for you when you come over. <laughs> so I know you've got relatives in in London, so you don't need to stay with a Machado house. Like, if you're a Sri Lankan listen, if you're a Sri Lankan fan listening to this around the world, I would get on bookings.com and you get one of those rooms that you could have free cancellation up to like the day before, <laughs> right? We'll know by the end by mid February. We'll know if this is on or not, right? Yeah, maybe maybe even the next couple of weeks. I don't. I hope not. But like, we'll, like. Ahead, I wonder, though. Mark, too. No, I, I, I was thinking, and like another thing that's been sort of buoying my confidence is thinking, where is, you know, watching the BGT and thinking, Australia, obviously always a tough win, but they don't look as strong, like sort of mentally mm-hmm. facing Australia in two matches in February. I always think, oh, that's going to be a tough series. Yeah. But they're maybe not as strong as we, as I initially thought. I know, I know um, I've said this before in this pod, but I just think the whole point, and I say it to Estelle all the time, and I say it to Dominic all the time, I'm just like, the thing about Sri Lankan cricket is we just find the way, right? It's like all, all it's like a boxing match, right? If if you were gonna if someone was gonna tell you how would the Sri Lankan cricket approach a boxing match, I'd say, look, we're not looking. We're not going to come in and try and knock someone out at the first round, right? That's not really our style. We're, we're, firstly, the first few times we fight, we're just going to be happy to be there, right? And then eventually, <laughs> at some point, we're going to get fed up of being knocked out, right? And then at some point, someone's going to go, "Come on, man, why are we getting knocked out? Let's figure this out." Then we're going to figure out a way of just staying in the fight, staying on our feet, and avoiding that knockout punch. And eventually, we're just going to start winning on points. And I think we're at that stage now with this team where we're just kind of winning on points. And we're at the point where people are starting to go, maybe these guys deserve a fight for the for the belt. Like, yeah. And I think which lucky cricket, it's always about finding a way, right? Um, whether we have to kind of find some bowler from Dan Saturn where he's invented a whole new way of, of, of throwing the ball down or we have to pick up a batter from... from Kind of out of nowhere, he has to reinvent himself eight times before he gets selected by the national team, even though he goes as the twelfth man to every single tour, and people have almost forgotten his name. And then he suddenly starts become out of nowhere, becomes like the best 
most prolific test scorer since Bradman, right? We always find the way to do something. Something will happen. We can't look beyond. We don't know what team we're going to play. We know, All we know right now when it comes to this championship is that they are four games in front of us. And if we win three, we, we, we will get through. Win these two games in, in in South Africa. And I definitely think if you're a Sri Lanka fan and you can do it, start booking those, looking at bookings.com and booking hotels around Northwest London. And the visa. The and the visa. Will, yeah, and, and, and the, the visa, visa if, you, if, you, if you need that. The Murley Ed will be at the Three Falcons pub almost every night after that. <laughs> win, lose, a draw. Me and Nick were there yesterday. Had a massive feast. We can talk about that later. Um, like, I just think this is a super exciting time, right? Sport should be about joy. Kind of, yeah. I don't know what's going to happen next, right? It's, it's. I'm going to wake Enjoy up. Enjoy it. Anxious. This opportunity in front of you. You gotta. You got. We just gotta soak it all in, right? To play meaningful Test cricket with these players that we've kind of like, you know, have had a tough run of it, right? It's been a rough ten years. It's been a rough decade. Um, and I, I'm thinking someone like Demuth, who's had one format except when it comes to World Cup time, mm. that he's just been playing, right? And this is his chance to say, hey, I'm the greatest opener of this era of test cricket, right? It's a chance for Angelo to redeem his career one more time. It's a chance for Chundi to, uh, you know, sort of leave his mark on Sri Lanka cricket. It, it, there's just so many cool storylines. Um, and then we have Asita, right? This battler who, when you watch him bowl, you're like, well, what what's different about him? What does he bring? But he produces and then you hear people talk down about him oh asata fernando isn't much of anything but you look at his record and he's been great i so i'm really excited i think this is this is a joy producing event and i'm really hopeful that or i'm excited to watch the match i don't know what i'm hopeful for but i'm excited to see how they play and leave it all out on the line it's you know every I, I spend a lot of time on YouTube and I'm when I'm out about tubes and stuff like that listening to every single podcast going where they might mention the Sri Lankan <laughs> cricket team right and the the thing I really really used to annoy me it's the reason why I got involved with stuff like this is because people who just talk down about Sri Lanka the whole time and it's it's not even talking down it's like talking like we don't exist yeah. it's like oh yeah they've had a few great players in the past and I'm like. Come on, man. It's, like, it's, it's, it's yeah. really dismissive. Criticism right? is fine, but it's it's that attitude of who cares? Like, they don't exist in the kind of thing, yeah. right? Yeah. And beca- because of that, that's why I'm just so... This is just one of the eye for all those guys, right? It's like, we're, we're here. We're not just alive. We're thriving, Right. We've got there's so many great stories, so many great, so much great narrative around this team. Um, we it's it's like watching the Undertaker at WrestleMania. You think you've knocked us out, then we keep coming back, right? And if we could just keep this streak going for three more games, yeah. then we get to our real WrestleMania, right? And, and we can also add that the arc of this particular Test Championship is interesting too, because we started off on the worst foot possible. We lost a home Test series to Pakistan two nil. Right. And I think at that point, I was like, oh, there's no way that they're going to be competitive in this World Test Championship. But they fought their way there. They've had some impressive victories against um, good teams. And now it's all to play for. If we'd won that, too, you know, we'd just need one win. <laughs> oh, my God. That's like I'm talking the biggest about- regret. Yeah. Right. We will, oh, dude. You know, Two nil. Like one you know. all, I can, I can yeah. accept that. Too near. Man. And the brazen lack of planning was really bad because we literally had stepped off the plane from the World Cup qualifiers. Mm. Three days later, we were playing this test series. And I think Pakistan had been in Sri Lanka for like a month at that point. So they were really ready to go and we ran into a buzzsaw. Um, I do think the, the kind of good thing that's come out of all this is that we've kind of realized that if we put some work into I say we... If the team puts some work into it, I don't, I don't have to do anything. And if, if you know how often I get my peloton, you'll know I'm not really keen on that kind of work. <laughs> um, the, if, if, if we put some work into it, add some structure around the team, figure out how it's going to work, then we can get results. And that's the most, like, that should be the lesson, right? We've got the talent. We've got the results. We just need to get that kind of secret magic source, which seems to 
like it's another major tournament. We somehow managed to be in the back end of it yet again, and somehow we're just a bit of magic sauce away from getting to the final. I'm absolutely buzzed for it. I don't think I could be more excited, to be honest. <laughs> like, what a yeah, great time to be a Sri Lankan fan. Yeah, it, it, it's for the, it, like I said last last time. Yeah, we were in with a chance, but it was like you know, with the results coming in, it was it was not going to happen. But yeah. here is a real chance to go through, right? And like Dom said, uh, and I don't like to speak ill of Australia, but the batting looks really dodgy, right? Like yeah. I mean, yeah. sure, Carmen Stark, Hazelwood, Lyon are going to be great. But if we yeah. look back to 2016, that's that was where the problem was, right? I mean, they were bowling Sri Lanka out for 120 or 200, but their batting couldn't do anything. So. Um, I think, I mean, if they can pull off one win against South Africa, you can dream, right? Yeah. You can I hope I'm it dreaming doesn't all like stuff. crash and burn like I, in you the know, next I think, three days. I think if, that, <laughs> if, we, if we pull off one win against South Africa, the pitch that we're using in Gaul is already being uncovered. They're just going <laughs> to leave it out there for the, next, for the next two and a half months to just bake in the sun. I'm, I'm in Sri Lanka next month. I'm bringing UV lights with me. To that <laughs> <laughs> right there. Um, g- guys, should we leave it there? I think... Um, we, need, we need to do a prediction, Mark. We got to do a prediction for this I one. D- no, I don't think we need... No, no, no. Let's not take faith in the gods <laughs> and all that. Like, we know what we want. That's okay. We are just putting it out there. All the old gods and the new. What we want. You know what we want. Like, deliver it. Be it. Like, all of them. Go, Please go do your work. Um, I think I think is that us? Is that us? Are we done yet? I think that's <laughs> it. That's it, right, guys? We'll be back. We're doing daily shows. Um, you know what's going to happen now, isn't it? It's going to be a horrendous collapse. But... Day one is going to be <laughs> yeah, one twenty or like... Yeah, they lunch. saw a, a no, strip that the first day of the BGT had seventeen wickets, didn't it? They they're gonna... yeah. <laughs> They're going to go and try and break that record. I'm kidding. I, I have faith. I believe. Believe. Uh, guys, uh, we're bringing the early end. Stick with us. We've got daily shows through um, this series. There'll be a few new vo- new voices joining us through it as well. I hope you um, enjoy everyone else we bring on board. Remember to follow us across our socials. Um, and I think the only thing left to say is let's go Sri Lanka. <laughs>